it's your favorite lawyer and today we're going to talk about why your woman or your girlfriend or your wife should not be driving your car and the significance of getting a separate uh, insurance um, how it can and cannot help um, in Texas and similar jurisdictions um, one of the things I wanted to discuss and talk about because um, it kind of do car wrecks and I also do uh, divorce and it kind of ties in two things um, they kind of tie together excuse me um, can your wife drive? Does she have a significant amount of wrecks on her insurance? Can your girlfriend drive? Does she have a significant amount of accidents? Um, sorry, on her history. Um, guys, when I am filing lawsuits on these personal injury cases, I look to see who the car is owned by. Um, and, and I do this because... Um, I want to know how deep the pockets are, what all I can hit, what all I can get for my client, um, and on this particular case, what all my client maybe do. Um, and there may be times where someone's negligent, okay, negligent in allowing this particular person to drive their vehicle. Um, and a lot of the times that happens to be men and their girlfriends, men and their wives, men and their significant others. Because the first thing that I've noticed as a woman is a man will let you drive their car. They don't care. They'll swap cars with you and they'll let you drive their vehicle. And now, see, you know, I'm not going to talk about my driving history, but it's not bad. But that is a way that you can get um, nailed in court. Um, if, you know, if your girlfriend or your wife is driving your car and they happen to get into a wreck, if it happens to be their fault or it's up in the air as to whether it's their fault or not, and they have a bad driving history, this can count against you. Um, and, um, I always tell people, um, one of the things, um, that you never want to do when this happens, cause this happens a lot. And it also happens with women driving men, uh, men driving women's cars. Um, your significant other may get in a car wreck. You may not particularly handle or know about the car wreck, or you may not handle the situation properly with the attorney's office or whomever's contacting you, your insurance company. And then out of nowhere, you can get served with a lawsuit for someone else's wreck, right? Um, and I've seen a lot of the times where people don't pay attention to this paperwork and they'll receive this paperwork in the mail, they'll ignore it, you know, they don't care about it, they're not going to think about it, it wasn't their wreck, it was their girlfriend's wreck, or it was my wife's wreck, or whatever, I wasn't driving, this has nothing to do with me, I'm not going to answer this, blah, 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 and have it no license after a while. Okay, because they will not um, entertain these lawsuits. They will not engage in these lawsuits. And eventually these lawsuits are put on their particular on their records and put on their driving record in a way that it will cause the uh, um, DMV not to issue um, Department of Motor Vehicles and um, not to issue you a driver's license. Okay, and Department of Transportation. They will not issue you a license. Um, and this will happen because, um, you ha will have a hold, okay, that you don't know about, um, and DPS has put this hold on your record because you've been flagged, okay, because your license plate came up or either you were a person of interest in a particular car wreck, okay, this is with a lawyer's office and you ignored everything that was done to you. They went to court, they ended up getting a judgment against you, turning this in. Okay, to everyone to stop you from being able to register your vehicle, stop you from being able to get a license. Okay, because of this wreck, you look up, you want to be able to get these things to your vehicle and for yourself because you don't want to be driving or riding dirty. And you have a $10,000 judgment plus attorney's fees on your head from, you know, some wreck that your girlfriend or boyfriend or whomever got into in your vehicle. Okay, so. I'll always um, kind of be um, wary about uh, trading cars. Now, if your girlfriend or boyfriend or you're in a position where you can be able to fix that car, no problem, then don't worry about it. Um, but it, it's always so sad when I get calls and there's nothing that I can do for people, you know, and it was just a girlfriend, a boyfriend, and they're not with the person anymore and they're stuck with this debt. It kind of is not, a, you feel bad. Um, it's And it's nothing that you can really do. It's like the judgment is there. They have no license. You know, they can't get their stuff registered or whatever. 
and stuff's going to have to be paid and a um, payment plan or something worked out so that these people are able to get their licenses and their registration and everything back in order. So it's important. I know it seems like not a big deal, but it's always important um, with respect to your vehicle and who's, you know, on your insurance, etc. cetera. Um, just because you have, and, and guys, if you're going to have your significant other riding in your vehicle, and women, I'll tell you this too, if there are any women watching, you're just going to need to put them on your insurance. You know, you just, that's the easiest way not to assume a risk. Because once that person's covered by your insurance, to be honest, and, and you have some policy or you have a good policy that will cover them, then the chances of someone coming after you are slim. And then it's like, you know, whatever, if they make your insurance go up, just get some more insurance or do whatever you have to do to mitigate that cost if, if you know, they're going to be riding. But, um, you know, I always want to tell people, you know, your significant other can really have a beer on your car situation. Um, and a lot of people don't really see that, but I see that, you know, they don't see it ahead of time before it happens, but I see it every day. Um, and so if guys, if you're going to have, you know, your girlfriend, your wife or whomever that doesn't have a good driving record, you need to get them covered underneath your policy so that if they go and hit somebody it's not your problem you don't have to worry about some attorney like myself suing you because you're like what the hell i wasn't even driving you know suing you to try to get some sort of money because there's no policy that will cover that particular person okay um just you know food for thought okay um and just kind of letting you guys know how the person that shares a vehicle with you can have a bearing on uh your your i mean your your life you know if you're being pulled into litigation so um you know i always say never switch and swap cars unless you can really trust that person if it's a new relationship and there's not much money on the other person's side i wouldn't be letting them drive your beamer um but um other than that you know if you are going to allow your significant other um, to get in your vehicle, know what type of driver that person is, know a little bit about their driving history, um, go ahead and add them on your insurance if they have a record to make them take a defensive driving course, go ahead and add them on and try to avoid, you know, any conflict or issues um, with them driving your car or then just don't let them drive your car at all or, you know, let them drive it knowing, you know, these things. Okay. All righty. Talk to you later. Thank you.